but hello, thank you for coming to Licensing Your Work with Creative Commons. My name is Miranda Fair. I am the Publishing and Open Scholarship Librarian here at Towson. Um, cool. So um, I am, I, I should say I don't work for Creative Commons. I'm just somebody that uses these licenses sometimes. I'm here to share information about it with you. Um, it's not like officially endorsed by them or anything, um, but we will get started. Um, so the plan for today uh, is to talk a bit about what is Creative Commons, um, sort of why you might want to use it and how you can use it, um, how you can reuse CC license work since that's kind of the, the point of the license, and then um, some places you might be able to find content. I can take questions throughout. Um, I have a poll I want to share with you first. This is the link to it, but this seems like not real. Um, but it is. So it's a Menti meter. You can also go to menti.com and use the code um, 24680136, which I'll also put in the chat. Um, and it's just a, a quick question. Um, to ask what kinds of works you might want to use a Creative Commons license for, um, so the options I have here are journal articles, images, or visual art, and you can check all that apply. Um, and this is what you personally might want to use them for, not, this is not a quiz, there's no correct answer. Um, open educational resources or OER, videos, music, other media, um, other, if you want to specify in the chat, you are welcome to. And the last option, which is not sure, I'm just here to see what this is about, which, which is totally fine. Okay, cool, we got journal articles, OER, videos. Nobody's unsure, but that's okay. Then we, so this is a good, a good variety of things, and, and we'll talk about these. Um, okay, continue. Hey, when it does this, okay. So, um, kind of a brief overview of what Creative Commons is. Um, it's a nonprofit group. Uh, what they do is provide free licenses to allow people to share their work. Um, and, and the licenses have different terms, which we'll go over in a bit. Um, it was founded in 2001. They launched the licenses that they have now in uh, late 2002. So it's been around for about 20 years. Um, and they're designed for a variety of creative works. So um, kind of maybe why do you want to use this? Um, you might, you want to share your work broadly. You want to make sure it reaches a large audience that there's a potential for reuse. So if you want others to be able to freely reuse and recirculate your work without having to ask you um, like, hey, am I allowed to use this? Um, or um, like worry about copyright infringements. It's kind of clearly lays out what they're allowed to do with it. Um, if you want others to be able to adapt and build upon your work, since that's um, what a lot of a lot of scholarship is, is it's building upon work that already exists. Um, also, like in education, you have a lesson plan, you want other people to be able to adapt and build upon that. You can um, release that under Creative Commons license. Um, if you want to retain copyright on your work, now you'll retain copyright on it even if you don't apply Creative Commons license to it, as long as it's your work. Um, the reason I put this in here, um, I kind of mean it as an alternative to like maybe you, you had a publishing agreement and they want you to um, like sign your copyright over to them. Um, instead of doing that, you can do this. Um, also, if that happens, I think you can tell them you don't want to do that. You can like add an addendum, but that, that's another topic. We can talk about in another workshop. Um, uh, they are relatively easy to use, um, and it's widely recognized. A lot of different platforms will use these too. Um, you might be required to, so it might be part of a publishing contract you have. Um, if you're publishing with an open access journal, they might say all of our articles are published under a CC BY license. You're like, okay, what does that mean? So you might have to publish under that license, um, or maybe sort of in addition to like a traditional publishing route that doesn't use Creative Commons licenses, they might want allow you to um, publish your author accepted manuscript and maybe an institutional repository or a named repository or um, online or on your website. Um, they might specify that you have to use a certain Creative Commons license. Um, that happens to you. I can help you look up that information also because it's going to vary from publisher to publisher. Um, that might be something that's required by um, like a grant fund that you you've got um, to complete your research. Um, they might want you to publish under that. So, or you, you might just want to, which is another good reason. Um, so a few considerations to think about um, before you go into it, what license you might want to apply and I'll go the other options are 
shortly. Um, so the type of work you wanna share is important. Um, so OER using any open educational resources, those are all have open licenses almost all the time you see them having a Creative Commons license. There, there are alternatives out there, but most of the time they are Creative Commons. Um, scholarly articles, I know a lot of open access journals will use um, Creative Commons licensing specifically. You might have presentations, something you did for a conference um, that you wanna share. Creative Commons works really well for this. Um, as far as sort of other types of scholarly works or non-scholarly works like videos, images, artwork, that type of thing can also um, be shared on a Creative Commons. Um, the other thing you want to think about is how you want others to be able to do the work or use your work because the uh, license terms are going to dictate how that's able to be done. Um, the other important thing you want to think about is copyright. So what you're doing when you adopt one of these is normally as a copyright holder, you have an exclusive right um, to sort of share, perform the work. Um, all of those rights, you can, you're, you're waiving some of them by applying a Creative Commons license by allowing other people to do that too. Um, and because you're waiving your rights as a copyright holder, um, you have to be the copyright holder in, a, in, able to, or in order to be able to apply a Creative Commons license to it. So um, you can't just take something that's in the public domain and put a Creative Commons license on it. You can't um, Take somebody else's work and put a Creative Commons license on it if it if it didn't have one already. Um, so you have to have the rights in order to be able to sort of grant these rights to others. Um, one thing to note is that here at Towson, at least, if you're a student um, or a faculty member, any of the work you create, you have copyright on. Unfortunately, if you were a staff member, um, Anything that you create in the scope of your employment um, belongs to the university. But if you like like to make videos in your free time and you um, want to release one of them under a Creative Commons license, you're, you're able to do that. So pay attention to that. Um, another thing is while licenses are very easy to apply, they, they're very weighty um, and they can't be revoked. So be sure that you wanna use one and which one you wanna use before you actually apply it because you can't apply it and then undo it. Um, there are also some other open licenses that I kind of bring up, um, or like public domain, which isn't really a license, but that is another thing. Um, one of them is that, I don't know if it's pronounced GNU or, or new. I know it's a, an animal that I've only ever encountered in a crossword puzzle. Um, but the general public license, they're on version three. That was actually established before Creative Commons, and they kind of took this as inspiration when they came up with their licenses. That one is usually used for software. So Zotero, I know, uses that type of license. Um, so a lot of like open source software will use that. Um, there's also a free art license. I don't know much about it, I'll be honest, but that's another alternative that exists. And then um, there are things that are in the public domain that of course you're free to use without restriction. And then um, there are some other, they have like a page on their site and I can send these slides out later that have, um, like compatible licenses, but they also talk about the compatibility within like different versions of Creative Commons. So it's helpful information too. Um, so this is a license badge, which you've probably seen somewhere. Um, we'll go over what the different components are and what the icons mean, how to actually read what it is. Um, the badge itself is not the license, it's just a visual indicator of the license, um, but that it's helpful it's just like a visual indicator of what you can use it for, um, but we'll go over what each of the icons means. So as far as the actual license themselves, um, there's three layers to each one. So the first one is the legal code, which is, um, like it sounds, it's the legal code. It explains um, what you can do with it, all of the sort of legal ramifications, things like that. They're very long. That, that, that one's the actual license. Um, but they also have something called a commons deed, which is they, they call a human readable version as opposed to being lawyer readable because the legal code it can be very dense. Um, this is usually what it'll link to first. Um, like when you link, when you see a license linked somewhere that'll give you sort of, it, and I'll show you an example in a bit, like bullet pointed things that you're able to use it for and things that you can't use it for. So it makes it pretty easy to understand how you can use and reuse the work. Um, and then there's also something called the rights expression language, which is the machine readable. So that's like the metadata that's assigned to it. Um, you don't need to worry about that if you have like a print item because it's not gonna be machine readable anyway. But um, if you're putting something on a website, it can be helpful. Um, there are 
um, sort of like things that have like harvesting ability. So like on like Google can tell if something is Creative Commons licensed as long as the like uh, machine readable version is is in there. So um, there are also the visual icons that these you'll probably see a lot. This is this is sort of what they mean how to interpret them. Um, the the CC is the Creative Commons logo, so all of their licenses are going to have that on it. Um, the next one, the one that looks like a little person, is an attribution license. Every license includes an attribution component. So if somebody's reusing your work, they always have to say that you were the originator of it. Um, if you're using someone else's work, you need to attribute it to the original creator. Um, that's what that one means. The um, dollar sign with a slash through it is no commercial use. So some of them will not allow you to use um, the work commercially or you can not allow others to use it commercially. Um, there's other versions of this that exist in other countries. So you might see one with like a Euro or a yen symbol with the slash through it, but they all mean the same thing. Um, the one that is a little arrow going in a circle is share alike. That means under the terms of that license, if somebody creates an adaptation of your work, they need to also share it under um, that license. So CC by share alike, that's one that Wikipedia uses, um, which is something a lot of people are familiar with. So that's where they might know it from. Um, but that's sort of dictating how others can share the work um, if they're reusing it or adapting it. And then the last one is the equivalent sign which is no derivatives, which means that you cannot share a derivative work that you've created. Um, one thing to be mindful of here is that the way derivatives are defined is that you could argue that um, like if you had a um, digital version of something and somebody sort of printed it out and bound it and made it into a book, um, that, that that's considered a derivative like under regular copyright, but um, under any CC license, you're allowed to share any of it in any format. So you could print something out, um, even if it said no derivatives, you just wouldn't be able to create a derivative work and then like share it, if that makes sense. Uh, any questions so far before I go into the license types? I realize I've kind of thrown a lot at you in somewhat short span. And feel free to type them in the chat at any time. Um, so the six license types, I've organized them from sort of most open, what allows you to do the most with it, to least open. Um, so sort of the most basic one is the attribution license. Like I mentioned, they all um, include an attribution component. This one is just called attribution because that's the only thing that it requires you to do. So that's um, the CC BY license. There's CC BY SA, which is the share like. Like I mentioned, that's like what Wikipedia uses. You just have to share any adaptations um, or derivative works under the same terms as the original one. Um, the next one would be CC by non-commercial, which means you cannot um, use it for commercial purposes. Um, it's also worth noting that it's not necessarily dictated by like what kind of organization you are. So you can be a nonprofit and use something for a commercial purpose. So you wouldn't be allowed to do that. You can also be a for-profit entity and use something in a non-commercial way. Um, and you, you wouldn't be violating that. Um, then the next vert one is CC by NCSA, which was non-commercial and also you have to share like. Um, and then the last two are the no derivatives license. So there's CC by no derivatives um, and then CC by non-commercial no derivatives. Um, the no derivatives and share alike are incompatible with one another because um, they uh, share alike is your sharing derivatives and no derivatives means you can't share them at all. So um, other than that, they they can all be combined with each other, just not those two. Um, some other distinctions that are worth mentioning, just because you might have seen these somewhere and they have the um, Creative Commons branding, like they're using their badge. Um, they're not one of the six license types. Um, there is a public domain badge. Creative Commons isn't like control things that are in the public domain. You might see this though, and if you're curious what it is, usually you're gonna see it from like a museum or archive or a similar cultural institution that's maybe digitized something and they've put it um, online or in a repository and they wanna indicate that that is in the public domain. So um, they might use that badge to indicate that. Now this is only for things that are actually in the public domain and that like the copyright on them has expired. So typically they're gonna be much older works. Um, 
or the copyrights expired for another reason. Um, there is also what looks very similar, except the little symbols difference instead of the C with the slash, there's a zero. Um, you can also use a CC zero license, which would be like you created a new work and you're dedicating it to the public domain. The reason it's not the same is because um, like we can do that here in the US. You can just say, I waive all my copyright on this. I'm putting this in the public domain. It doesn't apply in every jurisdiction. Um, I don't know exactly which ones it doesn't apply in, but but some places you aren't allowed to just dedicate stuff to the public domain. Here, you're fine, but some places you can't. Um, so that's worth noting also. Um, so you might wanna think like what license is right for me? Um, so here's some questions you might wanna think about when you are deciding, and then I'll walk you through how to do the Creative Commons license chooser. So. Um, the first question is, do you want others to be able to freely copy, redistribute, and adapt your work into new formats? If the answer is no, then a Creative Commons license is actually probably not what you want, but it's important to think about that. You might want that for some things you create, but not everything. Um, the next question is, do you want to allow adaptations of your work to be shared? If so, how do you want them to be shared? So that'll kind of determine whether you want to do no derivatives or share alike or neither. Um, do you want to allow commercial uses of your work? And then they have a, a license chooser where all this stuff's built in that's pretty pretty handy. So I will go there and show you how it works. So, um, so on their website, creativecommons.org, there's this share your work link. I will share this with you all. Um, so you can bookmark it and use it later. Oops. So they have this license chooser that makes it pretty simple to walk walk do this so you hit get started um it'll ask you again do you want adaptations of your work to be shared let's say yes we'll do share alike um it'll say allow commercial uses um i'm gonna say no so they have a distinction here of whether it's a free culture license or not that basically means like how much stuff can you do with it um then what it'll give you is this selected license. And if you click on this, it takes you to the human readable summary, like I mentioned. So that's one of the layers of the license and it has bullet pointed for you what you're able to do with it. So in this case, we can copy and redistribute the material in any medium or formats. So that was how I mentioned, like you can still share something in print, even if that was in its original form, um, as long as you're not changing anything about it, um, but you're also allowed to adapt, um, but we just can't use them commercially. If we wanted to, it would just say even commercially here. Um, and it'll explain sort of what the different terms were. You do have to indicate if any changes were made. Um, if I am gonna transform or build upon this, I have to distribute everything I've done under the same license as the original, which is what Cheryl like forces you to do. Um, this thing is also important. They, they really encourage you not to like, change the license at all um they do not allow you to apply any like digital rights management software that's usually what they're going to mean by technological measures it's going to restrict anyone else's ability to use it um because it's, it's incompatible with the license now up here it'll say it's human readable not substitute for the license if you click on this it'll take you to the legal code which you probably don't want to read <laughs> if you if you ever want to you can um but the human readable summary does a pretty nice job of briefly summarizing what you are and are not allowed to do with it. Um, if we go back to the chooser, there's this part down here that'll help others attribute you. So this is filling out the metadata that's gonna make it machine readable. So if you're putting something online, they'll give you this HTML code and then that's that's where it'll give you the icons. You can put this on your website if you'd like. It'll have you fill out the title, the author's name, if there's a URL, the source work URL, if it's adapted from something, if there's additional permissions, you can pick the format, you can pick the license mark. Um, and yes, this is this is what you can do with it. This is the older version there. They came up with a new chooser. It's still in beta. I think I think it's a lot better. Um, there are more steps, but um, it's different. So the first question is like, do you know what license you need? So if you're just like, I already know I want to share this under CC BY, you can do that. If not, you can say, I need help selecting it. So we'll ask you specifically about attribution. This this is interesting because this one says anyone can use it without giving the attribution. And this will give you a CC zero, like I mentioned before. So you're dedicating this work to the public domain. We're going to say they have to use attribution. Um, next question. 
we will say they can use them commercially. Um, and let's do no derivatives for this one because we haven't used that as an example yet. Um, so if you do, there are, doesn't ask you about sharing requirements because remember the no derivatives and share alike aren't compatible, but that's where it would ask you about share alike. Um, and then it has you confirm that it's actually appropriate for you. So we'll say this is my work and I can license it. I understand the terms of the license. I think this is an important check mark to have, which is understand that it's not um, revocable, um, which I guess, yeah, it makes sense to ask that since they're so easy to apply. It's kind of easy to forget what you're getting yourself into. Um, and then here it'll have you fill out the attribution details. Um, I think this is good because it encourages more people to create it. The other thing it'll do is it has this this piece that'll let you mark your work. So you can just use like a rich text version. So I can copy and paste this. This work is licensed under this. Um, if you fill out the attribution details, it'll give you more specific um, free. So um, we'll just say I took a picture of my cat and I want to license it. My cat's name is Jim. So this is Jim the cat. Put my name in here. I don't have a link to it. We'll say I took it yesterday and you can hit done and it'll fill out this information. So I can just copy and paste this. Um, Jim the cat is licensed under CC by no derivatives. Um, and then there's a little toggle bit down here so you can do the full license name if you want instead. There's also the HTML version if I wanted to put that on my website. Um, they also have this here for print work or media. So they give you a plain text version, which is helpful. So if you're have handouts you want to give people, you have a printed version, you can put this in a footnote, you can put it at the end, or the footnote of each page, you can put it at the end of your work, you can put it sort of at the beginning with your biographical information if you wanted, um, just to make sure it's visible to people, but they do have the plain text version, which is helpful, you can't hyperlink it, especially if it's printed off, um, but that that is helpful. Um, so that is that is how you apply the license. Um, any questions about this so far? Um, so we talked a bit about actually applying the license. I guess the question, question would be, is it as simple as just slapping a license on your work? Kind of yes and no. Um, most of the thought is gonna come in before choosing, because like we discussed, they can't be revoked. Um, so we looked at the different parts of the license chooser. We looked at the badge, the link text, and the HTML. There is also a very robust Creative Commons wiki which um, I find very helpful because it covers, um, it's like a crowdsourced resource that'll cover different situations um, and different examples, um, which I'll show you in a moment. Generally, when you're applying the license, kind of like we saw listed me as the author, it listed the license. And then if you're able to do machine readability, do that. Um, so ALM is kind of the thing you wanna follow. Um, the other thing to note is that these aren't automatically tracked by the Creative Commons organization. They don't they don't know when you're putting a license on something, um, but you can add them to spaces that have enabled Creative Commons content tracking. So a lot of the big ones are like Vimeo, YouTube, Flickr for photo sharing. You can indicate they have a built in place there where you can indicate like I want to share this under Creative Commons license. Um, so we'll look at the wiki and I'll also show you. So on their um, license chooser, they do link to a few different places. These are kind of the big name ones they're sharing. So like I mentioned, Wikipedia uses um, share like license, so Bandcamp's another one. Um, Wikimedia Commons, which is a good place to find things too. Um, so these are these are some other places that kind of have that built in. Um, so their wiki page, um, which is just, I will link this and then most of the stuff on, on this wiki is very helpful. Um, so this will go over like how to mark your work for different licenses. This can be very helpful. It's pretty straightforward when it comes to like a PowerPoint or a document or a website. Um, this will kind of talk about how to do it, how to do descriptive text. Um, this is helpful because you are you're allowed to edit it a little without affecting the code. So you might say except or otherwise noted. This is licensed under this. Um, that might be helpful if you have um, material you're using that you um, is, is under a different license. Um, you also might have noticed before that everything I've shown had a Creative Commons 4.0 license. This one has 3.0. There are older versions of the licenses, and they do have a site or a page on their site that explains like which ones are compatible with another. They just tend to get more descriptive over time. 
Um, most of the time you're going to see 3.0 or 4.0. Sometimes you see two. Very occasionally you'll see like the original version of it. Um, here's an example of how you might want to put it in a website. They give you good examples. They give you bad examples. Offline documents can be helpful since you can't actually link, but you can list the URL. Um, image captioning is another helpful one. They've got some links explain how you're reusing it. So they kind of go through the other author license machine readability. Um, and other good practices are like noting the title, linking to the page if you have this information. Um, they have this like bumper slide you can like put at the end of a slide or the end of a video. Um, so that that's helpful, but this is worth looking through. They have different examples for data sets, things like that. Um, if you're looking for putting this on a, on a specific type of work I haven't really talked about. Um, oh yeah, they have one for audio. They have the example of somebody like sort of verbally explaining the license at the beginning of a podcast, which which is helpful. Um, then um, another thing too that I'll mention now, just because we're talking about sharing and marking our work, if you're depositing something in um, the institutional repository in ScholarWorks and you want to release it under a Creative Commons license, there is a mechanism in there as there are for a lot of repositories that'll automatically apply the badge for you. Um, if you also aren't sure whether you're allowed to do that because it's been previously published, um, you you can send me an email and I'll I'll look into it for you um, because I can help with that. So, um, okay, let's see, I mentioned the content tracking spaces. Um, current slide. Oops. So when you are, okay, sorry, it keeps like, I'm just gonna have to put up with, is this the solution I need? You'd think I'd know how to use PowerPoint at this point in my life, but every time, yes, okay. Every time it gives me a different, um, Okay, so if you're using Creative Commons license content, which is, you know, why it's licensed in the way it is, because it's to encourage reuse. Um, important thing is respect the license terms. Again, the um, human readable version should outline them pretty nicely for you. Um, they, if you break them, you no longer have license to use that. Um, so you do need to follow them. Um, attribution is very important since that's a piece of all of them. You need to make sure you properly attribute the work you're sharing or reusing or adapting to its original creator. So a good acronym that usually gets used and it's easy to remember is the TASL. So T-S-A-L stands for title, author, source, and license. Or if you want to think about it differently, what are you sharing? Who created what you're sharing? Where can it be found? And then how are you using it and how are others able to use it? Um, so we'll go back to the wiki because um, they have another page for recommended practices for attribution, which goes over a lot of different um, places they kind of they use the tassel source here with all the basic components um they go over good and bad examples it can be helpful to have bad examples too um so great attribution it's going to include the title it's going to have the author it says which license it's under it's linked so you know where to find it you know where to find the author um where to find the original work things like that um so like this one's okay it doesn't include the title it just says it's a photo has a link to the license deed, has the name of the author. Um, you still, um, you still have at least the sources linked in this case. So you still have the elements. They're not perfect. This is a bad attribution. You can't just say it's like where it's from. So this is important. Um, they talk about great attributions for when you've made an adaptation of something. Um, so this is another good place to look because they'll talk about very specific situations that you might not realize you need to know how to resolve until it comes to them. Um, another thing too is maybe you're adapting a work and this is going to happen a lot in like open educational resources where maybe you are remixing um, 
materials um, that you're like you're drawing from multiple sources that have different Creative Commons licenses applied to them. Um, so on their frequently asked questions, they have a very fancy chart, which I find helpful. And it goes through the CC zero public domain and the actual public domain um, and all of the six license types. So what you'll do is you'll find like the two licenses that you want to um, kind of combine into one work or draw from to make a new work um, and like whether or not they're compatible with an, one another. So the no derivatives is basically incompatible with everything. Um, but like, let's say one of the works is licensed under CC BY and the other one is CC BY no commercial, you, ca you can use these together. So you find one on top and one on the bottom and where they intersect, the check mark will tell you, yes, you're able to do that. The X will say, no, you're not able to do that. Um, so that's, that's a helpful source that they have on their website too. Um, okay, so I don't even know if it's worth opening this because I'm just going to open links again, um, kind of moved on to the finding open content um, section. Oh, I did also want to have, I had another um, example of um, an attribution to show you. So this is an OER textbook on medical terminology. So it has the license for this one pretty clearly up here. So this one's just a CC BY. Um, they have kind of a more detailed information down here. So this, it's got all of the, it's got a title, all of the authors that it's licensed under an attribution 4.0 international license, except or otherwise noted. So there, there might be some cases they're not. In this case, it is the source that says um, it's a cloned version of a different book um, and that it mentions who did it. Um, so this one was on press books by these authors and that it was published under a CC by attribution license. Then it links the license. So in this case, it may differ from the original. Um, you might also see it in OEM materials as listed as like attributions and they would list like the different images or different charts or different um like versions of textbooks or where they got text from. Um, so you might have multiple little paragraphs like this, depending on how much um, work you're pulling from other works. Um, then go back to finding open content. So there's a few places you can look. We have an OER library guide, which I will open. Um, I There's lots of lists on here already of where to find open education sources and other types of materials. Um, I didn't feel the need to repeat listing all of these links when they're all in one place already. So um, this would be a good place to go to link to faculty select, which we subscribe to. There's the open textbook library. Um, another one I like is Pressbooks, um, which is where I found that medical terminology book. Um, so this one's not linked on that page for some reason, but you can search the directory um, for different types of books you're able to, to clone or reuse or adapt into your own work. Um, if you're looking for other types of materials, so maybe you're just looking for an image to illustrate things. Um, Openverse is sort of the big, and I'll demonstrate it, the big like, Creative Commons search place. Wikimedia Commons is another one. Um, the wiki also has a content directory list, which is just a directory of like directories that list other places where you can find um, images or audio. So there's a lot of um, like Creative Commons licensed music out there, videos you're able to reuse. Um, Flickr, like I mentioned, that's another one you can indicate um, on there so you can search the platform to find Creative Commons licensed materials. And there's a noun project, which is good for icons and um, sort of simple, like illustrative things you might want to use in a presentation. Um, so Openverse, you can search all content, so it'll bring like different kinds of things. I'm I'm just going to stick with my cat example because I missed my cat. I'm gonna look at some orange cat. So this one's also nice because it gives you different material types. So if you search, um, you can filter then by like what, um, like if you wanna use it commercially, whether you wanna be able to modify or adapt. So if you check this, um, it'll pull away all of the things that you're not able to modify. So if I wanted to make it like black and white and like write something on it, I couldn't do that. Um, there's ones that are not eligible for commercial use. So it'll take care of that. If you know specifically, like I only want to use something that's like public domain or so that somebody has dedicated to the public domain, it'll let you use all of these very cute pictures of cats. Um, 
And so this will pull up images and audio. It's like I mentioned before. Most of these are going to be, but there's some audio of, of cats meowing and things like that. Um, it also gave me some cats that aren't orange, but that is what Openverse is good for. I think the filtering, um, like the filters are pretty nice and easy to use um, and that they, they follow the licenses exactly. So if you're you know, wanting to only use things that are compatible with one another, you could just check those licenses. Um, then Wikimedia Commons is another one. Uh, a few other ones I didn't write down, but I wanted to mention, and there's like Unsplash and Pixabay, which have um, a lot of public domain or just otherwise you don't have to ask people to use them. Um, pictures, you'll just want to credit them properly, but it can be kind of hard to get a hold of people and say like, hey, you, the copyright owner on this image, can I use it in my book? Can I use it in my presentation? When there's plenty of freely usable media out there that you can just apply without having to ask somebody. Um, the Getty Open Content Program also has a lot of very high quality public domain images. Those aren't necessarily Creative Commons licensed, but they are in the public domain. Um, I'm sure we've also all encountered a lot of people that have been like, well, I found this image on Google, so I can use it. Um, Google Images also, if you weren't aware, has a Creative Commons filter. Um, just going to stick with orange cats. So very cute. So um, under tools in the search, there's this usage rights bit. So that'll say like you can look at commercial and other licenses, or I just want to use things that are Creative Commons. It'll give you, so it'll pull from a few places I mentioned, like Flickr, Wikimedia Commons. And the, the way it's a, in Pixabay, the way it's able to pull this is because these um, pictures did have that like machine readable um, code that I was talking about. Um, so this is how the computer knows that they're Creative Commons licensed. Um, and then here's the content directory I brought up. So this is again on their wiki. Um, so there's other video. Let's say we just want to use sound. They give you the sound directory list. These are all places that you can find um, Creative Commons licensed or public domain sounds. So if you need like some music, um, and now these are all places that you can find them. These are not necessarily mean that every single thing on one of these um, websites is able to be used. Some cases like royalty free music library, usually those are. Um, but I know like Tribe of Noise has a lot of Creative Commons licensed material, um, but but not everything is. So just make sure you're paying attention and double check. Um, so those are some other places you might want to look. Then um, additional resources are sort of the wiki and they have very detailed FAQ. Um, so I did a bit early, but um, I can also take any questions or if you have questions about a specific something you want to reuse or you're wondering how to attribute it. I can also, I'll stop recording at the end if you want to save some questions until then. Um, also email me. I truly love to talk about this stuff. So if you have um, any questions, especially when it comes to like OER, especially when it comes to publishing, if you're not sure what you can do maybe with your author accepted manuscript um, or you're looking for an open access publisher that uses one of these licenses specifically, I can help you see where to find that information. I can help you find potential places you might want to publish. Um, and here are my attributions at the end that I used um, information and icons from Creative Commons. They've licensed their site under a CC BY license, but I did also mention that their icons are registered trademarks. So um, also the survey, if you would not mind taking it, I know this was a very basic overview. Um, it was also the first time I'm doing the workshop. So this will help me um, work on future iterations of the workshop. And it'll also help me um, see if there's a need for like, a more specific like deep dive into like just OER specifically or just publishing specifically or finding images you're able to use things like that could be like a whole other workshop um, but if there's demand for it I want to know so make sure you note that also if you have any specific questions in the survey and you want me to follow up with you via email just make sure you include your email in the additional comments otherwise I don't know how to get back to you um any questions or any comments or anything else. Um, I also stop recording that way if you want to ask them when I'm not recording, you're able to do that.